The process of manually bending your channel letter returns can be time consuming and error prone. Wouldn't it be great if there was a way to help automate this process? There is. It's called the channel letter return module from Aries Graphics. This will help automate the process, resulting in more accurate letters in less time. The ultimate solution for channel letter automation is a bending machine from our friends at CLN or Computerized Cutters. We partner with both of these companies to provide a clean DXF file from our software that is the input to their machines for bending and notching the returns. But if your shop isn't yet doing the volume where this kind of automation makes sense, then the channel letter return module is the next best option. So in this video, we'll go through what we call the CLR module. We'll show you the workflow and the results. Uh, the channel letter return module is available in all of our main sign design software, including Sign Wizard, Neon Wizard, and LED Wizard. But today for the demo, we'll be using LED Wizard 7.1. We'll start here with a simple example, just with the text CLR. This is in the font Helvetica Bold at a height of 24 inches. So this will be my input data to the tool. I'll go to the Tools menu and select Channel Letter Return. And what comes up is this dialog box. And the first thing that we want to do is set the offset. And there are two values here. There's Offset, which is uh, the thickness of the return material here in the US, typically 0.040. And then we have another value of tool diameter. So this is the diameter of the router bit. And we simply use this to create uh, rounded corners on internal corners. Um, we're not actually creating an offset for the thickness of the router bit in terms of routing out the letters. We're simply creating an accurate path that the channel letter return will follow. So once I've entered those two values, I go ahead and click on Create Offset. And let me just zoom in. So you'll see now that, again, on an internal corner, we have the little radius. And we also have these points, which indicate the start endpoint on each letter. And we'll also notice that we have an internal loop and that is red for counterclockwise, and the external loop is blue for clockwise. So we want to uh, reposition the start endpoints. Typically, uh, we like to put them on the top of the letter. So I might put that one there, and I'm simply clicking where I want the start endpoint to be. Um, some people would put them on the corners, um, and then the internal loop, perhaps I would put here in the middle, okay? So I can adjust the start endpoints however I want them before I continue on to create the patterns. And once I've done that, we have four additional options. We have the tape width, and this will be something less than the uh, depth of the return. So four inches would be standard for say a five inch return. The material width, this is the size of the material that you're plotting to, the paper. Um, and we use this value because the patterns are nested. So I could say I have a 24 inch uh, material. Gap is the space between each return pattern. We have that set at one inch. And overlap is the amount of overlap of the return so that you can clench it together. And we have that set at half an inch. So these are all the options. And once I have the options, the way that I like them, I click on OK. And let me just zoom out. And this is the actual pattern that is created. We have four individual loops. And we'll start with the simple. We'll just look at the L. And we see the start point on the top of the L and an arrow going in the clockwise direction. So this is the beginning of our pattern, which would be right here at the edge. The first bend here on this corner is a 90 degree bend indicated by a straight line. We continue down to the next bend, which is also a 90 degree bend, but it's a reverse bend indicated by this dotted line. And we continue around the letter all the way back to the start end point. And we have an extra half inch overlap that we indicated, which will be where we clinch it. 
So when I select this pattern, I see that the length of it is 85.4 inches. Now that corresponds to the perimeter of the original letter, which I see here under path length is 84.9. Remember that we added a half inch, so that's why we had 85.4. So this exactly matches up to the perimeter of the letter. Now we'll take a look at the R, and on this letter we have the start point up here in the middle, and we're going in a clockwise direction. So our first section here is a straight line, and then starting here we have our first arc, and arcs are shown with long dashed lines, and instead of the angle along here we have the uh, radius which we put down here at the bottom. So this arc right here has a radius of 8.7 inches. So um, to go back to the actual letter, just to demonstrate this, so um, if I go into wireframe mode and, and the node edit mode, um, this is the arc that we're talking about. And so if I just make a circle, and I approximate this circle to this arc, and this is gonna be a little bit bigger, so something like that. This is the circle. Okay, so this is the um, half of this is about 8.7, and that is the radius of that arc. So this is important because um, this helps us determine which notching tool we need to use for these arcs. So depending on the equipment that you have, um, these radius values will tell you how sharp um, that curve is and, and which tool you can use. So as we go around this letter, we see um, our little radius inside corner here, um, and also here. And so as we go around, we see this here is that little radius. And we have our arcs with all of the angles. And again, that's, um, you know, this one combines arcs and uh, lines. And so that's how we, that's how we handle arcs. So um, these basically are, um, this is how you read the patterns, and and you know these these lines correspond with the points of um, of the angles and the lines. Okay, and then on the internal, again we're going in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction now, rounded internal corners, and so every loop uh, has its own pattern, and so that's how the internal loop looks. So that's a simple example. Now when we Go ahead and plot this out. These are four inch tall patterns with one inch gap. We would plot this, we would slice these, tape them up to the returns, and then we would know exactly where to bend and in uh, what direction and what angle. Okay. Some customers will actually print these patterns on a large format printer onto adhesive vinyl, um, perhaps also with a contour cut around each pattern so they can just uh, take that out and put it directly on the return. That's a bit of an expensive way to go um, compared to simple plotter paper, but um, but it is definitely another option. So that's a simple example. Let's now take a look at a little bit more of a complicated example. Okay, for this example we'll type in the text channel letters and we'll switch the font to uh, a serif font. Maybe something like uh, Rockwell. So here's our lettering channel letters, 24 inches. And we'll go into the channel letter return tool. And for now we can keep the same values that we did before. So 0 0.040 for the offset and a quarter inch tool diameter the offset. Now in this case we'll go through and we'll just move again our start endpoints to tops of the letters. So for the internals maybe we could put this one here in the middle. Again so I can zoom out and zoom in um, on these letters while this dialog box is up. And so I'm just going to switch all these let me put this one here. And this is a matter of personal preference. Uh, different people like to do this 
in different ways, but typically um, we do like to put them up here on the tops. Zoom in on that one. Just like that. Okay, so that's good. So there's all the start endpoints the way that we like them. And we'll stay with a four inch width. Um, we have a material of 24 inches, so we'll see some nesting on this one. One inch gap and a half inch overlap. So when I click on OK, uh, these are the patterns that are created. You'll notice that we get um, four patterns tall before we nest and then switch to. Um, going down the long ways of the paper. I'm going to extend this out because this goes way off the end here. So down here in the end we have um, some of the internal loops. And so again this is um, the way that the patterns look. And of course it's important if you're plotting this on paper to make sure that you have enough paper and that it's properly registered because some of these patterns can be very large. Um, but you can see that the process is actually very fast um, and uh, it doesn't take a long time to create to create these patterns. If you're using LED Wizard, then at this point you would export this pattern as a vector file at DXF, AI, EPS. Um, if you're using Neon Wizard or Sign Wizard, you would just take this directly into the Plot Manager um, and plot out the patterns. So. That's a summary of the channel letter return feature. It is available um, in all of our software. It, it is included in LED Wizard 7 and 7.1. It is included in Sign Wizard Pro version 7. And it is also included in Neon Wizard Pro and Neon Wizard Plus version 6.5. Um, in other levels, versions of our software, it's available for US $300 um, as an add-on onto that software. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please contact us for more information.